Studios. And here's your host, that guy. Who's also named Adam. Based on the, on the introductory guy. Yes, we have a big team here at RC with Adam. So here's Adam. Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. Hopefully you can hear me. Hopefully you can see me. We've been having some technical difficulties, which is pretty much what I say every single week, but that's kind of the theme. It's uh, it, That's what makes things fun, I guess. I see in the chat, we've got Godzilla, we've got Hind RC, we got Jaden, last name, we got Ozzy, we got Robert, we got Waxfire. Welcome everybody, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. In case you're new here, Hello and welcome. This is RC with Adam, the channel that is all about helping you build competence and confidence in the RC hobby and beyond. All right. So, uh, what are we doing today? Live stream. I haven't been here in like, I mean, we haven't done a live stream in like a month. Sorry about that. Um, and, uh, yeah, mainly the thing today is to just do a live stream because that's once you get out of a routine of doing something, it's hard to get back in it unless you just you just do it. So, um yeah, so we're just doing it. We're just doing it, guys. That's what we're doing today. Uh trying to get back into the swing of things. Uh I see everybody in the chat there. I will again, remember if you have questions, uh two things. One thing, if you have if you have questions, be sure to tag me to increase the chances that I will be able to see your question. Uh, or you can also drop a super chat if you want to do that as well. Uh, and don't spam because I will delete your comments if you spam. Um, so there's no need to spam. I'm probably going to see your comment or again, tag me or something if you want me to see your comment, but don't spam, don't spam in the chat. Um, and you may mean well, but, uh, but uh, still don't do it. Anyway, uh, alrighty. So, of course, today we'll be answering your questions and stuff for about the next two hours or so. Um, and I've got a couple things just thought I'd talk about because you might be interested as well. Uh, talking about, I guess, as my as the title of this implies, uh, Q and A. I have upgraded my budget basher. You guys remember the budget basher, don't you? You can't see it too well in this light, but uh, that's the budget basher right there. That's a five inch FPV racing style quadcopter. Not really racing though. It's really uh, freestyle. And I have upgraded it. And I will, I'll have, you know, one, one of the things I like to do about a live stream is I like that I can just kind of talk about all kinds of different stuff and I don't have to like edit it and turn it into a video. So. Uh, I like to give a lot of sort of sneak peeks, sort of videos that may be coming up, that type of thing. So uh, the the budget basher, the upgraded budget basher is going to be, uh, I'll, I'll have a video just, just kind of talking about that um, uh, because it's a pretty big deal because I've really had the same, uh, the same style uh, for... I mean, the same components and everything for like two years. But anyway, uh, so we're, that uh, learned a couple of beta flight things that I think might be helpful to you and more. I'm just reading my title here and more. So that is what we're going to talk about today. Um, all right. So uh, let me see here. Let me answer. Let's just start off with answering a couple questions in the chat if I can. Uh, let's see. Uh, all right, looks like Jaden and possibly Hind RC. No, at least Jaden, I think. I think you're new here. I haven't seen you before, so welcome. Welcome to the chat. All right, now Godzilla, before Godzilla was asking all these questions about, uh, or, or was spamming, I think the question was about what type of, um, like what's a good frame that you can find internationally? Uh, a, uh, a, uh, uh, Sorry, frame a frame that you can, yes, that you can buy and it will you can get it internationally more easily, which basically means shopping on uh, BangGood, uh, BangGood. If I could spell BangGood, BangGood uh, dot com. So let me just check this out because I'll tell you. Oh my goodness, pardon me. <clears throat> I'll tell you right now, the frame that I built the budget basher on. This is a, uh, well, let me see if I can find it actually. Oh shoot, what's it called? Well, I have a link somewhere. I know I do. 
Um, anyway, it's a good frame. I can't remember the name of it now, though. I was going to pull it up, but I can't remember the name. But anyway, the budget basher frame, I mean, that thing was pretty darn cheap. It's like under $30. I think it was like closer to like $20, and uh, it works very well. So I'll have to find that information. Uh, somehow let me see if I let me see if I can let me uh, let me look this up maybe I can find one of my own videos or something like that but basically that would be a good a good frame um, oh yeah I'm not sure actually what the question was for exactly the specs on the frame like for prop size but anyway uh, I will look that up uh, what else do we have going on here Robert Brander says good morning good morning Robert it's morning where I am I'm not sure where everyone else is but it is morning here. All right. Um, let's see. I don't go. Okay. All right. Oh, I see Godzilla up here now. Okay. Uh, there don't, I don't get, don't good. There aren't any good frames in India. What should you do or what should you use? Banggood is banned. Is that what you're saying? Banggood is banned in India. Is it? I did not know that. Uh, interesting. Okay, well, all right, that rules that out. So never mind about that, I guess. Um, if you can get if you can get something from like Race Day Quads, Race Day Quads just came out with a new uh, frame. And let me let me see. Let me pull that up for you because I think it's just interesting. Also, I was looking at this uh, frame. It seems like, uh, well, what's cool about it is that it's uh, like a, uh, let me just do a switcheroo here. Sound effects free of charge. Uh, this frame here on Race Day Quads. Uh, okay, that's not what I'm looking for. They came out with a, a uh, I think it's a new frame, relatively new. Um, but it's a really, it's like a budget frame. I and mean, I think that's pretty cool. Or no, you know what? It's not race. I. What's the deal with these with this naming guys? Because it's like you've got, you've got. Uh, there's the wait. There's the race day quad source one, and then the and then the source two. Which one was I looking at? I think it was the source one I was looking at. But that's the T. That's the TBS. Hmm. Strange. Um, also, basically the I the iFlight Sedora frame. Well, maybe not exactly the Sedora frame. It looks. Okay, never mind. I take it back. I was just going to say it looks similar to the like the clone version that I got for the budget basher, but that is not um, that's not the same one. Anyway, uh, basically what I'm trying to say here is if you if you shop on race day quads, which I love race day quads, uh, they do actually have some pretty good cheap frames like this one, the source one. I think also the I want to say the Rotorite CL one is pretty cheap. Um, just like a basic frame. I was thinking about getting that one actually, because I'm thinking about making another five inch quad character. <laughs> so anyway, uh, oh, oh, one more thing before I get any farther, I want to, let me do a little switch right there. Boom. Before I get any farther, I want to say a big thank you to all of my Kofi supporters. That's KO dash F I supporters, the Kofi crew. Uh, all of you people, either just the monthly supporters or or the uh, one-time supporters, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. We're really kind of starting to build a little 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 bit of momentum on there, which is super cool. And if you are interested in supporting me and supporting this channel, you can go to ko-fi.com um, and you can support me. It's like Patreon, but better because it's not Patreon. Um, and so you know, there's basically there's anyway, this isn't a commercial for whatever. I'm just trying to explain it to you in case you're like, what's Kofi? I don't know. What the heck is that? Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, big thank you to everybody, uh, to, uh, Daniel Markle, somebody Rumpelstiltskin, somebody else, uh, Agirios Demos, thank you. Pran, pranavasana. Thank you as well. And then, of course, we got Skypod and we've got Remington. So thank you, everybody, uh, for uh, supporting this channel and all that. Also, I haven't really publicized this, but I may as well mention this. Uh, I designed this. I think it's the world's best, uh, but I might be biased. Uh, 3D printable um, uh, uh, camera mount. So it's a quick detach camera mount. I think it's super sweet. I know we're getting a little off topic here. 
and I will get back to the chat in a second, but, uh, but, uh, I think it's super awesome. And so you can get the STL files, uh, from my Kofi like shop. So you can go to ko-fi.com slash RC with Adam and you can get that. So I think that's pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, if you have feedback on that as well, I would love to hear about that. So again, those are just the STL files if you have your own 3D printer. But anyway, enough about that. Back to that thing. All right, let me check the uh, let me check the chat here. It's hard to. I'm not a super fast reader, and it's hard to keep up with you guys. It's just you know, you guys are just going a mile a minute, which is 60 miles an hour. Yeah. Um, all right, let me, there, I saw a question. I saw a question. Let me get to this question here. Oh, I see some, uh, I see some, uh, some flight, te flight test controversy going on in there, in there. Not really. I'm just, well, mostly kidding, I think. All right. Um, I know I saw there was a question in here. Ah, Hind RC says, uh, can you guide me on settings for SP Racing F3 for my um, Raf Raf Raphael Park Jet? Oh, no, I can't uh, because I am not familiar at all with the Raphael Park Jet. Um, and I'm a little bit familiar with the SP Racing F3 a little bit. But if you, I mean, I would definitely say if you have, well, if you haven't already, definitely go to the SP Racing F3 website and and look up the uh, like the um, well, like the instruction manual and the uh, diagrams and stuff there for sure. I wish I could help more, but I'm just not familiar with any of that stuff. Honestly, when you say park jet, I'm instantly I'm like <gasps> because I I just those seem super. Uh, those seem kind of complicated to me, which is sort of silly, I guess, since I, I do build quads and that sort of thing. But anyway, um, yeah, that's the best I got on there. Uh, Christopher Rye, very interesting spelling, says, have you tried the Larva X? Thinking of buying one as a first drone. The Larva X, um, let me pull that up here. Uh, just so I, I like to do that. So that way we all are kind of on the same page and also that I will have a clue as to what you're talking about because some, sometimes I don't. Uh, here we go. I, now, at this point in time, I'm wondering, like, is there more than one or because they just crank out these quads like crazy. You have the HD version. Uh, now, th that's not to be confused nowadays with the DJI HD version because the DJI HD has the whole uh, 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 DJI air unit and stuff in there or, or the Cat X thing or something. Anyway, uh, let's see. So the Larva X. Now, the Larva X, is this the one that you're talking about? This one on the on on race day quads here that I'm looking at? I mean, it looks... It looks um, if I recall, it had really good reviews. I mean, it's definitely, let me see here. Hmm. Hmm. No, I mean, I haven't used one, so I'm just sort of speculating here. Um, I think it would be, it would, I mean, it's, it's, it's more, it's more sporty. It's more sporty. I'll tell you that. Like it looks, it's definitely, you know, there's not a whole lot of protection on the canopy. So that, that is something, um, you know, there's the, the, it's a pretty tight build. So, I mean, personally, just going off of just, just my gut feeling here, I would say go with something that is more, sort of like a little less a little less high performance a little less sports car if it's your first one especially for the price cuz you can you can find a lot of a lot of other um micros for that price in fact i think well yeah race day quads has like a whole micro section right here i mean i know that the tiny hawks are really popular um i would definitely take a look at this even if you don't buy from race day quads um sometimes it's just nice to compare you know, compare the different stuff. Like I would probably actually, well, for that price range, what about the, uh, 
Where did that go? The oh, there's a the tiny hawk too. Actually, the the what that's pretty similar to is the uh, the tiny hawk race. I think that's what it's called. The tiny hawk race. It might be the race too. I I'm, I don't remember. I think it's on sale. No, that's. Uh, I thought they had it on. I thought they had it on clearance. Anyway, the Tiny Hawk, the Tiny Hawk race. Is it the race? The Tiny Hawk race. They don't. They don't seem to have it here. Um, but yeah, if you're going with like a micro. Personally, I'm. I'm thinking. Something. I don't know. I think I personally would probably not go with the Larva X as a first quad excuse me as a first quad but that's just me all right question answered i do tend to go off on a change tangent so i'm trying to get a little bit better at that sort of oh uh, let's see here uh jaden asks uh hey adam is oh no did i mess up oh i messed up my super awesome custom sticker I mean, custom hat. Anyway, uh, all right. Uh, it says, "Hey, Adam, is Banggood a good website? Is it reliable?" Um, good, good is a is a is is rather subjective, I would say. But yes, uh, it is. I've found it to be quite reliable. Whenever I shop at Banggood, and again, this is like aside from whatever you know, you, aside from the 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 question of like, should you shop at Banggood? So the, uh, that question aside, um, I have found that it, it usually. Uh, what I try to do is, since I'm in the U.S., I, I order from their U.S. warehouse because otherwise it will take a long time, like at least a couple weeks, which, I mean, I guess that's not you know that long. But anyway, it, it will take significantly longer if I get it ordered from China and don't really want to get it ordered from China. Um, so I pretty much always make sure to get it from the U.S. warehouse, and it uh, it's uh, it's been reliable, I would say. Yeah, it's been reliable. For me, anyway. Um, let's see here. Jailbreaker says hello. Hello. Uh, Ray asks, can I update XM or XM Plus firmware with a jumper T8SG Plus? or some other way, or do you have to have a Tyrannus controller? I can bind with Jumper, but no RSSI. Ooh, I don't know, because I've never tried. I've never tried. I have not yet gotten into uh, Free Sky receivers and stuff, but I'm thinking about it. Um, but unfortunately, I cannot help you there. Somebody help him out. Somebody help Ray out about updating the xm or xm plus firmware with a jumper t8 sg plus or the question is do you have to have a tyrannus controller i guess i guess that's the uh that's the the question uh jaden asks also is there a fly sky fs i6 x firmware update that does not have an alert for vir for virus that works oh okay um so the i think the question here is is there so the when you go to update the flysky firmware or when you download it it might say your your antivirus software on your computer might flag it as like something that may potentially be i, I don't think it says that it, it has a virus but i think it says like it's like it could or it's like suspicious or something what i've found or well okay so my understanding, or basically, <laughs> try to figure out how to phrase this. Basically, uh, to answer the question, no, I don't think there is a, a, a an alternate firmware version uh, that that doesn't pop up as that. And then the other thing is, but I don't think it's actually a problem unless there is like some sort of virus that they're putting in there, and it's just like some. It's like a one of those quiet viruses, you know, one of those sneaky ones. Um, so I cannot say for sure, yes or no, there is there's not uh, one of those uh, uh, in there. Um, but anyway, but I have not found it to be a problem. So I will say that. That's what I will say. Uh, <clears throat> um, 
Oh, Robert Brander asks, is Banggood delivering these days? Yeah, that's okay. So that's a good question. I have not ordered. When was the last time I ordered something? No, I ordered something. I ordered uh, I ordered the parts for my uh, my Cinewoop, or some of the parts. I think I ordered the frame from Banggood. Um, again, I think it was the U.S. warehouse. So it, the, you know, from basically the closest warehouse that you can. I think that's probably the the most important thing. Uh, Daniel uh, Daniel E. Markle says, "Oh, I know you. Hey, thanks." Um, says we need RC with them stickers in the coffee shop. Yeah, that that could be cool. Hmm. That could be very cool. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Wait. Oh. Wait. Is this working? Uh-oh. I think I'm having some technical problems. Or I might be. Or maybe I just noticed this now. Um. Let's see here. What's the deal with that? Hmm. Oh, no. Okay, we're good. I think we're still good. My preview just dropped out. Or I, or I didn't have a... I, maybe I never had a preview. I don't know. Or something. Uh... Am I, am I still live? Are we... Is it... Is, can you see me? Can you hear me? Because uh, now I'm wondering if the, uh, like I said, technical issues. Wow. That's weird. You're good. Okay. Thank you, JR. B. Thank you. All right. We're just going to have to ignore, uh, ignore the statistics or the... Uh, whatever i'm getting here and we're just gonna have to roll with it oh well okay all right back to what i was talking about which is uh that i don't remember so we're just gonna keep on we're gonna keep on going all right um oh yeah grumpy fpv hello grumpy fpv uh says get the freestyle two for a first outside quad um the Freestyle 2. Let's take a look at that one. There we go. There's a Freestyle 2. Man, I'll tell you what, guys. There are so many quads. Um, well, I'll, I'll, t I'll say that in just a second. But here's a Freestyle 2. Look at that. They have like a weird... They put that weird like halfway spray painted paint job on there. Like I'm not sure. I'm not sure who was in charge of that design. They're like, you know how people love like when you like just kind of like spray paint something, you just kind of like do one pass with a with a spray can. They're like, yeah, they're like we should make the quad like that. Cuz people love that stuff. They're like, yeah, this thing will sell like crazy. <laughs> Actually, it does make me think that quad uh quad painting uh, I feel like that should be more of a thing, you know? Like I mean, the carbon fiber looks great. That's nice. And obviously, you're going to chip off paint and stuff. But, like, you'd think that hydro-dipped or, uh, just, you know, just spray-painted uh, quad frames would, would be more popular. But I don't think I, – I don't think I, I don't think I see them very often. Um, yeah. But, hey, listen. I want to tell you something. I want to tell you that there are so many new products – and quadcopters and airplanes and motors and camera like it's ridiculous i don't know if you're like me but like i you know i subscribe to a lot of the review channels and all that stuff i try to stay in the know kind of my job and so i well, i guess i'm not very good at that part though <laughs> but so but what i'm saying is so on youtube or whatever you see like boom there's a new product boom oh my gosh oh this is a this killer oh man this is a dji killer this is a gopro killer this is a gopro killer 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 and it just is overwhelming so i want you to know don't worry too much about getting the exact perfect right first quad because there are there there is always going to be a new thing that is probably improved because we're talking about technology here and technology just gets better faster and cheaper all the time so 
you know, if you're, if you're, if you're freaking out thinking like, oh my gosh, I got to get just, you know, this right thing or, or, or maybe you just bought something and they just came out with something new, which I mean, that happens, that happens to me. It happens to everybody. Uh, don't feel too bad about that because that's, it's just, that's just kind of, you know, how it goes. And it's like, if you buy something really good and then they come out with something even better, that doesn't make your thing not really good. It's still really good. So anyway, just don't get too stressed out or hung up about uh, always having the latest and greatest because you will uh, pretty much, well, I guess you'll be happy for like a very short while and then you'll just have to get the latest and greatest. So don't worry about that too much, um, which is a perfect segue. Boom. Good job, Adam. Perfect segue into uh, I have upgraded my budget basher let's talk about this the budget basher here uh i don't actually shucks i don't think i have any good photos or anything for you but you're gonna have to take my word on it i upgraded what did i upgrade i upgraded the motors oh gosh that's a horrible you can barely see that let me switch over here boom upgraded the motors i upgraded to these motors on here so we've got the zing e or zingy uh 2306 2450 kv motors and i i haven't flown this very much i've done like a couple flights um or one flight and that was that was pretty much it but uh it's just great having new motors on here i mean whatever kind of motors they are i i'm like i don't I can't really say like, oh yeah, these motors are super great. They're amazing. Cause like the old motors I had on here were two years old and they were, you know, beat to snot and they, uh, or they had the snot beat out of them and, uh, they were all, you know, gravelly and bad and stuff. So a big improvement here is just having new motors. That's great. And these are higher quality motors than the DYS, uh, motors that I had on there. Also rocking the, uh, the Nazgul iFlight, the iFlight Nazgul 5140 propellers, which I have, uh, I just put out that video, I think, I think just yesterday, uh, about those, flying those around, and that's, that's really great. The other thing that I did is I changed up the camera, and actually we'll look at some flight footage. Uh, you can't even really see the camera, but I, what I did is I kind of, um, so you may have seen the, uh, the uh, uh, video <clears throat> excuse me you may have seen the video about this guy the uh the cinewoop uh that i was building which honestly didn't like turn out super satisfactory um so i still need to kind of play around with that uh but i have this nice camera on here the uh the um phoenix 2 is the run cam phoenix 2 camera on there and I had the iFlight uh, Sigma antenna, tiny little thing, tiny little thing on there. And I, um, you know, had that whole setup. But then I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to fly this thing. Like, I just, I'm, I'm just not, I'm not going to fly it as much as I fly my budget basher, my normal, my, my, you know standard five inch so i took off the camera out of there put it on the budget basher again i know you can barely see anything but it's okay i'll have a video coming out about that uh and i put the antenna you you may notice the antenna is right there <laughs> it's right there you see that little antenna it's coming out the front and you're like what the heck adam why is it coming out the front that's not how that works ever the antenna always goes the quad the quad quad law quad law says that the antenna always goes out the back and either it goes straight out the back or it goes straight up out the back or well or maybe at a 45 degree but it always goes out the back what are you trying to do adam well here's the thing this is really interesting um the what i found was that with how i had my quadcopter set up before let me pull up a photo here so that way it's more interesting. With with the way that I had my quadcopter set up before, I had the antenna. Let me see if I can actually get a photo that shows the antenna. Um, <clears throat> I had the antenna coming out the back, just like just like normal, uh, you know, as is pretty common. Let me pull up this guy. Shaboom! Oh, you can't see it. Sorry. 
Shaboom. Okay. And uh, yeah, there we go. You can see it quite nicely there, I would say. So it's coming out the back there. And let me get my windows straightened out. Okay, cool. So yeah, this is kind of a weird setup because I had the the GoPro on there. And uh, anyway, sorry. So the antenna. So I had the VTX antenna. Specifically, that's what we're talking about. The VTX antenna was coming out the back right there. And it had it had this it had this really long pigtail that came all the way through there from from there the MMCX connector from the VTX uh, video transmitter. Sorry, I try I try not to use too many abbreviations because like this is a place for new people. So. If you do have questions about abbreviations, just ask. Anyway, so it comes out the video transmitter, and then it went through there, and then it went to an adapter uh, for a, 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 a SMA adapter. So like kind of a big old chunky thing, and then it spat out the back, and that's like a pagoda style antenna. And uh, and <clears throat> so what actually what's weird already about that is I have it like pointed down because usually it points up. So it's like, what's going on there? Well, what I found was that um, the having the antenna like that, I got better signal when, you know, when the quadcopter was like flying sort of like above me, because if it's, if it's up here above me, um, then it, it seemed like that angle was better for, for, for reaching the, for transmitting the video signal to the to the video goggles, so that was interesting. Um, but anyway, so but, but the problem with having the antenna on the back there is that when I would fly away from myself, I would have good signal, and then when I turned around, and and usually like you know you you kind of fly away from yourself until maybe you have bad signal, and then you turn around. And then you are thinking, okay, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna fly back now because I have bad signal. Well, if your video transmitter antenna is on the back, and then you start getting bad signal, and then you turn your quad around, now you have the whole quad, uh, and you know the GoPro and the battery and all that stuff pointed or in between you and the antenna. So my video signal would end up getting worse, uh, which is very scary. Um, and I was like. This just doesn't make any sense. This does not make any sense. Now, granted, I I don't have really that great of a of a video setup right now, um, so I mean that's that's not to I mean this 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 should be true no matter what your video setup is. But if you have a better video setup with like uh, better um, maybe better antennas and and receivers and that sort of thing, then this wouldn't be as big of a deal, I suppose. But in any case. <clears throat> so I was like, oh, that's interesting. What a terrible idea. Uh, because that just, it just like, you try to fly back to yourself, back towards yourself, and then the video is actually worse. So it's this kind of, it's this conundrum there. Uh, so I ended up sticking it right on the front. I don't have any good photos right now. I don't think to show you, but take my word for it. So now I've got the little antenna sticking out the front, right kind of in this section. And it's just kind of poking out, sort of straight out the back. So, and, and again, I think that works well because what I've been doing lately is actually a lot of flying kind of over myself, sort of through you know trees and stuff. So instead of having it like on a uh, transmitting sort of on a, a lateral plane, I guess you could say, it's more of a vertical plane. Ooh, I sound fancy. Vertical, lateral, big words plane anyway uh so that was one of the big things that i changed i also changed the receiver so the receiver the uh the the you know the radio uh connection receiver that uh instead of having the antennas sticking out the back like that again i put the antennas on the arm i mounted them on the or i mounted the receiver actually kind of like right there which isn't super great but then i stuck the antennas out so they're kind of sticking out uh, off of the arm, which I think is good because one, it gets it away from the quadcopter there, uh, away from the body. And I think, uh, it will just be, there's less in the way. There will be less in the way. Um, like right here, for example. So if I'm, if I'm over here and I'm trying to get a signal to either of those antennas, I got to go through all of this junk, the, the carbon fiber frame, 
which is, uh, you know, carbon fiber is very bad for radio uh, reception and that sort of thing. Uh, so um, I think that's going to work out great. I also changed the uh the position of the xt60 and i printed a gopro mount i modified this gopro mount um which is not my design but i mod modified it to fit these mounts right here those guys so anyway a few few upgrades most of it is uh well maybe not most of it but i don't know but the main the main stuff the vtx the uh the mamba f405 flight stack is the same the receiver is the same it's the fli 14 plus which i think is the best receiver for fly sky mm, delicious <clears throat> anyway so uh in case you can't tell i'm pretty excited about that um it does up the stakes a little bit in terms of wrecking this thing because i got all new parts but you know what uh it it uh it uh it takes money to make money as they say so sometimes it takes good parts to break good parts or something like that except catchier all right let me let me uh let me scroll through these uh uh these uh the, these convos these messages these writings okay oh good everybody was like yes all right excellent glad everybody's still here gavin low i see you i see you it was probably from a while ago but uh that's okay that's okay all right <clears throat> uh godzilla says hey i want to use a drone with a mamba f405 and floss v3 and want to use the dji fpv system will the dji air unit fit in it i'm gonna say no i don't have a dji air unit so i should i should make that statement first but uh i'm pretty sure that is a that's very tiny uh i think the floss frame the floss oh do they have it on race day quads i don't even know mm, pardon me no i don't think they do no, I think you can only get that from uh, certain places. Oh, well. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's a small racing frame. Um, the Floss V3. Could be wrong about that, but uh, somebody let me know. Let let this person know. Gavin Lowe asks, can you tell me why my FLI 14 Plus only shows RSSI 34 or 35 when using 4S battery and RSSI 29 or so on a 3S battery? I cannot tell you that because I don't know why that would be. Um no that should not that shouldn't that should not happen that's strange uh i mean do you well no i don't think you you can't that's a five volt it's a five volt receiver so i was going to say like if you were maybe if you were like plugging it directly into the battery it would get like some sort of different voltage reading but i i don't think that's the case um hmm I don't know. I mean, unless it's like that, like all the time, it kind of sounds like, like it would just, that might just be a coincidence. Um, it definitely shouldn't really, shouldn't really show that, but it could be, it could just be, it could be your flight controller as well. Uh, I'm not totally sure about the, the relationship as far as the receiver RSSI interacting with the flight controller to give you like an accurate reading or not i haven't really had to do much with mine with the mamba f405 uh and and the rssi i will say i think the rssi i don't think it's super accurate like i think i think if you get down to like 20 rssi it could drop out so i i think i think it's uh or it's almost like it's it's not it's not steady almost or something like that because I have had it before where it seems like I've I have good RSSI like down to forty percent I think when I when I lost it in the bean field I think that was uh, I think that was when um, when I I thought I had good RSSI but I did I did not <clears throat> so yeah I don't know I'm not sure about that one that one is a mystery. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, 
uh daniel says i got a freestyle 2 rtf kit as my first quad very crash durable and decent starter with goggles and controller yeah that sounds that, that does sound like a winner personally i think you should listen to daniel whoever it was christopher i think who asked that question about what should you or about getting the larva x as your first quad <clears throat> Oh, let's see. What else here? And then we're going to talk about some... Oh, another very exciting thing, which uh, I will need... To, oh, I think I need to get actually some uh, DVR footage. I think I need to do that. But anywho, uh, excellent, excellent. Uh, Robert Brander asks, is Adam doing his makeup? Um, I don't think so. I already did that, so no need to do it again. Oh, uh, Gavin Lowe says, another question. Why does my VTX power go back to 25 every time I unplug the battery? I have it set to 200 or 500 every time I change the battery. Uh, can I can I fix it at, at certain milliwatts? That's a good question. Well, what kind do you have? What's your what's your setup? Because that's the thing. It's kind of a lot of times that's you know stuff is kind of interdependent on other things. But, um, um, oh, Daniel says uh, in response to that, uh, low uh, is VTX low power disarm enabled in beta flight? That's a good question. So low uh, low power disarm. So I guess it goes to low power when you disarm in, in beta flight or something like that. Um, that that would be a good question. Or I was thinking maybe if you uh, maybe if the VTX tables aren't set up correctly. Maybe, maybe that well, I guess if they weren't set up correctly, you wouldn't be able to change it. That's a good question. Yes, Red Dog Drone says I mount my receiver antenna on the arm between them and use zip ties and uh, heat shrink for great signal in any direction. Yeah, I uh, I agree with that. I've seen a lot of I think a lot of the um, the uh, <clears throat> uh, what's that called the Crossfire guys with their antennas. I feel like I've seen that a lot uh, w where they sort of go like. You know sticking out from the arms either like sort of like 45 or 90 degrees to each other uh that type of thing it also just looks pretty cool and it flattens it out it flattens out the quad a lot more nicely i think see now i don't have i don't have any i know you can barely see it but now i don't have any like uh antennas sticking out the back getting in the way of the battery it's it's all nice and clean um and i've got you know i've got this antenna coming straight out so that's not sticking up so i i like it i like it i think it's i think it's gonna be working uh you know pretty well uh godzilla asks should i make a cinewoop or freestyle you should make a freestyle um i'm not ready to say that cinewoops are not that great but i will certainly say that cinewoops are are there are very specific use quad they 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 really are again this is not coming from a cinewoop expert but uh i'll tell you what my biggest problem with the cinewoop it does not even like how it flies or whatever it's loud it's so loud uh when you have because when you i mean you've got two things going on you've got the ducts you've got the you've got the ducts and you've got the um really high kv motors with these little propellers and when you have that going on well and then you have that and it's heavy i mean this thing is like excuse me my goodness this thing is like as much as a freestyle quad almost weighs almost as much as a freestyle quad depending uh depending on you know what you got go going on with it but I mean, it's it's not a lightweight thing. You got these itty bitty motors trying to just doing everything that they can 
to keep it in the air. And look, I'm 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 generalizing here, but um, basically that's my big problem with it is that the it's really loud. That well, that's one of the big problems. Um, yeah, it's just obnoxious to me, personally. But again, I need to do I need to do some more, um, some more testing and stuff with my Cinewoop. But but definitely, if you're going for your first build, definitely um, definitely go for a freestyle quad, unless you specifically want the capabilities of a Cinewoop. So unless you are specifically doing this to film to to film uh, in that Cinewoop style and Basically, that means you want to be in tight spaces around people and squishy things and things that would get damaged by propellers. And you want to film it like smoothly and stuff. So, yes, anyway, enough said for now. Gavin Lowe says he's using a Tyro 119 with the FLI 14 plus. Aha. Uh-huh. Brock. Brock says, no, it won't fit uh, about the DJI unit. Floss V3 is a racing frame not made for DJI. Yes. And that is a good, that is a good point because um, a lot of frames now are specifically advertising that they will work or that they are made for DJI uh the dji air unit sort of thing and uh in case you don't know what i'm talking about the dji air unit so i believe the dji air unit is if you have the goggles and the transmitter um because it has sort of both of them combined here it is no that's yeah air unit well yeah and then you have the um Wait, that's just the... Oh, you need the camera as well. Okay, but then you have the Cadex Nebula. I don't know if that... I think that's only the video. Uh, I could be wrong. I haven't looked into this a ton, but... Where did that go? There it is. That's what it is. Which is... Wow. Man, I mean, that is something. I mean, it, it, I, man, I am, I am really... I'm starting... I'm starting to 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 think about getting on the DJI the DJI train um at least for the video cuz it would just it just w- it would just be way more fun to fly if nothing else cuz you could really see you could really see uh what was going on speaking of seeing what is going on it's always really important to be able to see uh, you know, just, well, I mean, generally, and when, when you're flying your quad, it's really helpful to see things. And one of the big things about seeing things is that you wouldn't you, like, if you fly in close quarters and you're familiar with everything all the time, it's not that big of a deal. If you, if you kind of can't see exactly, you know, exactly where you're going and sort of where you are. But if you are in an unfamiliar place, then it becomes much more problematic. So let's take a look at a video of, um, so spoiler alert, uh, I almost lost my quad flying in the mountains, but the spoiler is that I did not lose it because you see it right here and I was able to, you know, upgrade it now, but I almost lost it flying in the mountains. And uh, let me pull up that, that, that clip here if i can find which clip it is which clip is that probably this one i want to make sure we should have no sound because there's not really anything to listen to all right blah 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 all right so here we go now we get to enjoy some flight footage let me uh get the size correct on here all right so, and again, I'm going to I'm going to make a video about this I think as well because look, it's fun to uh it's really fun to, you know, fake it till you make it and uh make everybody think that you're super awesome and that you don't make mistakes, but you know what? That's just not the truth. And in keeping with the spirit of this channel, uh 
that wouldn't help you build competence and confidence if I was just like, oh yeah, I never get anything wrong. So here I am, here we are, flying in uh, an undisclosed location in an undisclosed mountain range. And, you know, this was my second flight. I was getting pretty, you know, getting more comfortable, just kind of flying around, um, not trying to do anything crazy because this was really, it. this turned out to be kind of a, a wash of a, of a trip. Um, but it was just a practice trip, just a practice run. And so right there, that's a lit, you know, things are getting a little fuzzy, a little, little scary because when you're, you know, there's kind of a clearing, kind of a, a rocky outcropping sort of. And when you're on the ground, you think, oh, how could I possibly not see this from the, from the air? Uh, you know, like it's, it seems obvious where the clearings are. Well, turns out it's, it's not, it's not so easy. I mean, it's not easy to, as well, it's not even as easy to see things from the air anyway, but then when you add the fact that you're like, you know, looking through a, a 1980s VHS, um, then things get even harder. So here I am flying around, and again, there's there's no audio. Um, and in a minute here, we're just going to enjoy the flight. Ooh, I clipped that, clipped that a little bit. So this was uh, this was actually my first time like flying like out in the wild and uh again i'm just kind of keeping it close you know things are going okay this was with the old camera that i that i took off of the quad so here i'm like okay i think the wind's gonna blow me back sort of away from myself so so right now i'm pointing i'm pointing towards like b the direction behind me um so i'm thinking the quad is going to fly away from me uh, and and the wind is going to take it. Well, I think what happened was I I must have looked at the at the mountain range or the the ridge off in the distance, and I thought I had gotten blown much farther away. Okay, but that was that was not the case though. And I think it's this part right here. And I'm starting to come down. I'm like, oh, okay, I better get close. I better you know start coming down. And then I go, oh shoot, I must be way I must be way up here. Because, uh, you know, the wind carried me so far away. But then things start to get staticky. <gasps> RSSI low. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. Oh, my gosh. Where am I? I don't know where I am. Okay. So I just throttle up and I start spinning around to get a better signal. And I'm like, oh, shoot. None of this looks familiar now because I could be anywhere on this ridgeline. And, oh, oh, no. RSSI low. That's bad. That's bad. That's bad. Don't go that way. I can't go that way. But if I go this way, it's staticky. Oh, my gosh. All right. So then, oh, actually, I think for some reason it, it, it makes the it makes the video player freeze up and so what i realized is oh my gosh the way that i have to go is towards the static ah and it's like oh, rss as i low oh my gosh and it keeps it keeps freezing up my apologies um it didn't freeze up this much but it, it did get that staticky it got that it, it did get that blank so come on now <laughs> come on this thing's being weird Again, uh, something about the file type or something about how it records it, it causes it to freeze up. There we go. So I had to fly into the static and just kind of, it's kind of just a Hail Mary a little bit. And I'm thinking in my mind, I'm because that's usually where I think. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like this is so stupid. My, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose my quad. I'm going to lose my GoPro. Uh, this is just, this is, this was a terrible idea and I am a huge failure and that's kind of, those are happening very quickly. But, uh, and, and as you can see there, I, I came back down and I found, I found myself. So what I ended up doing, uh, because here's the thing, I could hear myself. So I was using my ears, you know, as a way of sort of locating where my quad was. Problem is it's kind of hard to tell sometimes whether something is directly in front of you or directly behind you because because you know both ears are kind of equally hearing stuff so maybe that's a good lesson there if you're if you're gonna if you plan on flying sort of one direction or the other maybe you should almost well you don't want to see that's the thing if you're wearing goggles you don't want to point the other like you don't want to point perpendicular to it but but if you did then you could easily hear which side uh which side you were so 
Oh my gosh. Anyway, that was super intense. So I wanted to share that with you guys. And that is, this right here is one of the reasons why I upgraded the camera because I'm, I, you know, wanted better image quality. It's very important. And that's one of the reasons why I'm thinking like, man, a DJI air unit, you know, that, that just that digital, it doesn't have to be DJI, but whatever digital better quality would be, uh, would be really great. Um, so yeah, that was really, that was, that was really intense. Let's replay that. Let's replay that a little bit. <clears throat> Cuz like it may not seem like a like a big deal, but if you've ever been lost, just think of that feeling. Think of that, like, it's like a slight, just on the edge of that little tinge of panic, you know? Uh, especially when at first, you're, when you go from like, oh, yeah, things are great. Think, this is so cool. And then you're like, <sighs> so just think about that, you know, when you're lost. And it's a really weird, it's a really weird situation. Um, <clears throat> it's a it's very weird situation where... I'm on the ground. I'm not lost. I know where I am, but I'm flying this thing and I have to find myself. But here's the catch. If I go too far to far one way or the other to look for myself, then I will fall out of the sky. And so at this point, I'm basically going actually behind myself right there. And that's why when I turned around right there, the, that's what the antenna is at the back of the quad. This was before I upgraded the quad. I should, I should have mentioned that, but that's, yeah, that was before I upgraded the quad. And so the antenna was at the back. So right now I'm getting great, great video quality, not as good rece uh, receiver connection because I'm, I'm, I'm flying, uh, because I'm flying, you know, behind myself. So now my body is in between the transmitter what I should have done, one thing that I that I should have done, I felt like I did a, a decent job uh, somewhere because what I did is when it started to get staticky and I start, I saw that low RSSI, I was like, oh, no. So then I basically just, well, I, it was a little bit of a panic, but I, I basically put, uh, you know, raised the throttle to get up and give myself some some room so I wouldn't have any trees or anything in between me. Cause I I'm thinking at this point, I'm thinking like, I must be up here. That's what I thought. I was thinking I must be up here somewhere. And that was not the case at all. I was actually the other way. So that was just a, a very, wow, very exciting thing. And then, uh, and that's what I did. I also, I, so I raised the throttle and I did a yaw spin because I'm like, well, at least, you know, I'll turn around at some point and it will work out. Also, just go right about there. There's a big cloud that came through as well, so it looked it looked wrong. Again, it didn't break it didn't freeze this much in real life. It's just this video player that is being silly. Yeah, see, so now it's all cloudy. But I I did have to fly basically into the snow to try and fly towards myself. And then it, at that point I could hear the quad fly over me. Um, so I learned, I learned a lot from that trip. Um, it didn't really, it wasn't a great trip in the sense of that it went like I thought it would, but that is, that is how most trips, uh, to the, uh, to the mountains and those types of things, training, training trips. That's, that's usually how they go. They're really, like really not fun. Um, but you learn a lot and, uh, that was interesting. So, oh yeah. So one of the things, did I say this? I thought I started to say this. One of the things I should have done is actually raise the transmitter up, um, like over, like over my head, but that might've been kind of hard, uh, to like maintain my, well, my balance. Cause I was standing, but I was, I was standing partially for a reason because I wanted to be a little up a little bit higher to get around the rocks and stuff. So anyway, that was an interesting, interesting discovery adventure uh so i want thought that might be useful 
to you guys as well as well and um, let me just look through the let me look through the comments here Mm. Ah, VLC. I'll have to look into VLC. I've heard about VLC, but I haven't used it. What does VLC stand for? Yeah. Brock says uh, at 508, he thinks I could see myself. Oh, at 508? Yeah. Well, wherever that shows in there, 508? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm right there. But it, at that point, I, I was able to, to recognize, you know, where I was. So that was good. Um, yeah, but anyway, it's so, it's so funny though. Like, I mean, hopefully, hopefully soon, I mean, obviously we have digital stuff coming out now, but hopefully soon we will look back at these, um, well, but look back at these, like, like we look back at, or, or, you know, VHS or, and, you know, or early, early digital video where we're like, wow, that was such bad quality, but you know, now everything is much better quality. I mean, it's not. It's not horrible in in some ways, but it in other ways is well, let's say it's certainly not good enough. It's or it's certainly horrible enough, I guess you could also say. But it was cool. So because I, I did get some good um some good footage. And let, let me actually uh let me show you some um some some of the um just just to juxtapose that i suppose uh let me show you some of the gopro footage and i did do this actually well and i did uh slow motion you know so or 120 frames per second which i love doing i love doing that or was this 240 no it was 120 frames per second so you have to have a 140 240 shutter speed but oh i love that doesn't that look good i think it, well it's better on i think on my screen but and this is well and so this is actually with the flat color profile because the the problem is uh and I, I need to play with this more but you know the gopro color it looks great like well it looks great most of the time and it's very you know sharp and vivid and stuff but i was just having way too many problems with like the clouds being blown out and then the just the just too much contrast there's too much contrast so i went with the flat color profile and i think that looks really good you know, let's tell you what, let's do this. Boom. Let's make it. Yeah, that looks nice. Uh, the flat. Can I get rid of that? There we go. Doesn't that look nice? Look at that. And this is this is in slow motion. But that's what I love about the slow-mo stuff, because like you can take something that happens, you know, uh, like that, like a, a few seconds for a turn, slow it down uh, by four times so you end up making it four times longer and then it looks looks really cool see like if i could if i could see that in my goggles which that even that is not really the i mean that's better quality than than what you'd see in dji goggles but uh that would be helpful but even so even even still it's like these these mountains and i call them mountains but they're like they're like foothills to other places that have real mountains like you know, three thousand feet or something, but um, they're just there's so many freaking trees everywhere, like just everywhere. It's it's a, it's a jungle, man. Uh, there's there's there are no, I mean not no, but I mean, let's say in the area that I was in at least, there are no peaks really. There's no like, you know, open spots. Not really. Well, not that it would matter, but there aren't really like large bodies of water. Or 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 visible like noticeable streams. Um, mm. So anyway, that was a that was pretty. Well, it was it was it was risky. I felt though that as far as what I aside from 
sort of getting lost. Um, you know, the little flights that I was taking was, you know, it was, a, it was a manageable risk because here's the thing. If I, I, it, it, this, I realized this, like, and that was part of the point of going on this trip, uh, up here was like to just get a feel for like, you know, flying in the mountains in, in the, out in the wild, you know, other places. And it became very real to me that, that, uh, like if my quad goes down, if I lose signal or w whatever happens, if my quad goes down, like even like a hundred feet, you know, away from me, like away from me laterally uh, off the side of the, the mountain, that thing is going to drop really far down. And the brush is so thick that, I mean, even if it, even if it lands on the ground and it doesn't get caught in a tree, to where I can't reach it. The brush is so thick in the in the the terrain is so steep that it would it would be uh, possibly impossible to get it back or or at least practically impossible. Um but I love that though. I think that looks so good. That was an eagle, by the way. I like that. I'll tell you what, man. <sighs> Technology. Technology. Chop, 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 chop. See, like even that, even right there, if my if my quad, you know, if the propeller broke or something on that branch, like, and it went down, it would take me, I don't know, a while, maybe a couple hours to find the thing and get the thing. So anyway, just it's just a lot, a lot higher risk for your quad flying. Um, in a place like that. So now I have a lot more respect and awareness for those long range quad videos that you see, or even just flying like over, you know, treetops. Um, because if you get your quad stuck in the top of one of these trees, like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And nothing, pretty much nothing. And I, I also forgot to bring like a, like a throw, throw line or something to like, be able to shake the tree branch down. Joshua Bardwell has a actually a pretty good video about uh, a bunch of different ways to potentially get your quadcopter out of a tree, uh, which I found entertaining. And, and actually, I did learn something. And it does seem like just throwing a line, a weight, you know, a, a weight on the end of a line is one of the best ways of, uh, of doing that. Isn't that nice? Love that. And then if we go towards the, where was it? I was like, oh my gosh. Actually, let's not slow-mo that part. Let's just see that. So I come up here. See, so you can see pretty well on here. And also there's a lot more. That's the other great thing about slow-mo. It really smooths everything out. So yeah, this at this point I was like, oh, shucks. Uh, you know, uh, where did, you know, where did I park the car? I thought it was right over here. I thought, uh, you know, what, 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 but, um, man, I'll tell you what though. I love, oh, there's a little birdie up there. Ah, <sighs> yeah. See, and then as I come back, a cloud comes over. So nothing, you know, looks like how it did before crazy stuff, but man, I'll tell you what, speaking of long range, because I think we've looked at enough of this. Uh, and, you know, I'll, I'll make a video talking about this anyway to document that. Uh, you know, speaking of uh, long range, let's just take a look. I don't know if Race Day Quads. Does Race Day Quads have the FlyWoo Explorer? FlyWoo Explorer. 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 That thing seems pretty sweet. I'll tell you what. 
Ex explore. Well, if I could spell, that would help things a whole lot. Yeah. Let's see here. So there's the four inch, and then are they all four inch? Oh, I guess they are four inch. I was thinking of something else actually. So you have the, and they're all sold out. But man, so that what is that one? That one's the that has the Cadex Tarsier. Okay, so it's see now that that seems to make a lot more sense to me. I'm really looking forward to like really small, like 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 we just we need to, like people are already doing naked GoPros. And there's already this like HD, you know, dual camera thing built in, like built into your FPV camera or or a separate camera, but it's like integrated into that whole system. So like how how far away are we from just having a GoPro that can be integrated like that or having GoPro quality? Like what is the secret sauce in GoPros and other other high quality? Well, I mean, really GoPro is like the main one. Uh, what is their secret? to uh to that anyway this thing looks super sweet and after watching those videos of like uh dave c and other people flying this thing like super far like up to a mountain it's crazy it's crazy like and, and before this before my little experience here i was like wow that's super cool but now it's like oh man like at any second i mean if you you know you have good quality gear so the chances are low but still it's like just just it's more real. It's more, more visceral and uh, and more you know higher stakes because at any second you could just this thing could just um, could, well I shouldn't say just at any second but you know what I'm saying like if it were to go down, good luck finding it, man. Oh yeah, that was the other thing that I learned is GPS would be great even just to get the the coordinates off of the DVR or something. That would be super great, but it'd be even greater. Like it'd be amazing to be able to just fly around and then you lose connection and then it's like, oh, I'm just gonna GPS my way home. Oh, that'd be so cool. Red Dog Drones, no. Somebody, uh, Robert Brander says, why not go for a six inch frame for four inch props and get the props out of your video? Well, um, the props were not in my video. Oh, the so the props were in my FPV video, uh, but I don't really care about that. And then as I have it right now, if I do a wide field of view, but not a super view, I, I'm pretty sure the props are not at all in the frame. So no problems there. Uh, talking about on the GoPro. Uh, so also the other thing is if you go with a six inch frame and a four inch, uh, four inch props, well, you're just kind of adding weight of the weight of the six inch frame and you know smaller propellers so eh, i don't know if that's a super great uh super great trade-off and then uh red dog drone says try a dead cat style frame and i guess this is a dead cat style frame this fly the fly woo uh long range micro long range explorer so um yeah they're all sold out though which is so sad what do you guys think of that ghost stuff you know the ghost the ghost protocol thing. I think it looks pretty interesting, but it's obviously not been, you know, tried and tried and tested as, uh, as, um, crossfire crossfire has been, but, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking about it. I think I'm not sure, but I think it is. I think, well, not that it really matters that much, but I think it is a little cheaper than crossfire. Um, I don't know. It looks interesting though. Something I might, I might, might do it. And honestly, partially just to be different, just cause it's like, if everybody's got crossfire, I want something different, but that's just, that's just me. <laughs> Godzilla says, bye-bye. Have a good night. Have a good night, Godzilla. And we will see you in the next one. TSO Day says, hey, Adam, just want to say a huge thank you for all your help with FlySky stuff through the years. You have helped me get flying more than once. Right back at you, TSO Day. Um, you are welcome. I'm very glad to hear that. I love hearing that from people. Uh, it is a very cool thing. And I forget that sometimes that, like, it's like, oh yeah, like 
this like my you know i make videos to help people with stuff but it actually works sometimes so that's always cool <clears throat> um yeah brock says look up the oma 85 which is the uh the the oma god version of the beta beta 85 i believe it has the gopro integrated well so th but it not really i mean sort of but i mean it is kind of integrated but it's not it's it's still kind of a still sort of a frankenstein thing but let's look that up or do they, do they have it here or can you no i think you can only you know that you can only get that from uh I think you can only get that from certain places. Yes. But it's basically like this. Except isn't the OMA 85, isn't it? It's a pusher, I think. I think the I think the OMA 85 is a pusher. Um You know, I'll tell you what though, the next best thing is uh is really I don't know if they have them on this website, but is the um uh what's it called? The instant oh they do have them. The Insta360 Go. Insta360 Go. Because, I mean, oh, it kind of depends on, like, what level of quality you need for your, for your, for your, for your video. But in terms of, I really think the Insta360 Go, which I don't have one, but I'm just, I've seen things about them. That does seem like the best option for a micro, for getting, like, HD quality footage, not necessarily super juicy gopro gopro footage but hd quality footage and stabilized footage on the uh, on the quadcopter in fact i think uh joshua bardwell recently came out with a video comparing the insta 360 go to the um naked fp or na na naked gopro the gopro without the case uh attached and maybe it was the um 85 um but it was one of those and, and it was a uh he did like a side-by-side -side flight comparison and with the, in, in both of them stabilized with the Insta360 with the flow state or whatever they call that stabilization. And then the other one with real steady. Um, and to me, it seemed like the Insta360 Go, I kind of liked it more. It's kind of hard to say, but at the same time, it's like the Insta360 Go is just so easy. Cause it's like, again, I haven't used it actually, but, what i've seen compared to the naked gopro i mean first you got to get a gopro naked uh or or pay someone to do it uh and then and so you have to do that and then you gotta like kind of and you gotta get like a case for it or you have to baby it and so it's a little bit more like fragile whereas with the insta 360 go you just like strap that thing on there and it's so tiny and i think that would be really awesome to put on like you know towards the back of the quad to get that third person view look which personally i think i was one one of some of the first people to do it and then other people did it and they made it more popular but that's but that's up for debate but anyway um so got on a little tangent there but yes this th that looks interesting <clears throat> uh <laughs> Daniel says, uh, I've, I've had to use one of those yellow slingshot things a few times for treed planes. They turn hopeless situations into easy recovery. Yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. It's yellow slingshot things. Oh, oh, you mean like the big ones, like the, like for slinging those, those lines over the, over the trees. You know, I've been thinking, I need to kind of like actually get something going with this, but I've, I was thinking about how easy it would be to just get a little quad, like to just like you have a mechanism on a quad to like take a little weighted line and you carry it up over a branch and then you drop, you drop the mech or you, the mechanism drops the weight. Um, like if you're trying to put a line over a tree branch because you are, or, or, or over, a tr or over a tree because you want to pull the tree down when you're chopping it down. I think that would be the way to go as opposed to like, attaching the line to the quad i guess that could work but i'd rather not have that attached to the quad anyway that could be fun for sure and like super easy because i don't know but i don't know about you 
uh, let me go full view here for story time. So I don't know about you, but uh, I've chopped down quite a few trees, um, especially uh, with my dad. He's a tree chopping guy. And uh, uh, so there have been some interesting situations, but it, it always works way better when you have a line to pull the tree down. Like you really always want to do that uh, unless unless you have like a lot of room and, and that sort of thing. And you can it doesn't really matter a ton where the tree falls. Um, and so there have been a lot of times when we're like, we're throwing, we're throwing those little line bag things, trying to, you know, sling it around a certain branch or we're throwing, you know, um, I don't know, like baseballs or something with string tied to it and, uh, just doing all kinds of different stuff. We have tried like, you know, the bow and arrow thing with a string and that's, that's always tough because either you're like too far or what all this different stuff. And uh, I think if you could like you just have a little mechanism, a little dropper mechanism or something, maybe I don't know what attached to the bottom of a quad and you just fly that quad over the branch. You drop the mechanism. Boom. And you just fly away because then otherwise the problem would be if you have the line attached to the quadcopter, then it could get like caught in the propellers and you know it, it could be that could be problematic um or if the line gets stuck up in the tree then your quadcopter is tied to the line that's stuck into the tree anyway but i digress <clears throat> but that would be a pretty cool thing what's next on the talking points it looks like let's see we got that we got oh one more thing here probably one more thing so we talked about that let me just mention one more thing here um excuse me i've just been like burping all morning sorry my goodness so basically um not only because of my my mountain experience my, my mountain flying in quotations uh but other other reasons i'm i'm really thinking i want i think i think it's time to upgrade some of my gear or or possibly all of my gear and i'm thinking about upgrading my transmitter yes i am and one of the things i'm looking at i've heard a lot of really good stuff about the radio master t16s now you guys tell me i'm that see i'm now i'm asking for suggestions because see here's the thing i want a good radio um but i don't now it it doesn't have to be like space flight quality Okay, but at the same, because look again, I'm 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 coming from Fly Sky here, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So uh, so even I'm I'm sure something like this would be good quality, 150 bucks. That's that's super reasonable, definitely reasonable. But at the same time, you know, I don't want something that I I don't need. So like I don't need a thousand switches. You know what I'm saying. So if you have the do you do any of you guys have the TX 16s or or what would be your recommendation for uh for a a well for a high quality radio and one of the things that i'm interested one reason why that i like this is because what i'm thinking is for my nicer stuff you know for my like my more you say professional level quads or just just my nicer quads i'm thinking about transitioning to something like the ghost uh radio protocol or or crossfire something like that so i would have a um you know i'd have that that module put in but then i'm thinking about you know i've got all these fly sky receivers and stuff so if i could do something that would also use that i could also use um the fly sky the old receivers for the fly sky receivers that would be cool too and the radio master seems to you know fit the bill but again like i said i don't really necessarily um need a ton of switches or you know other stuff what am i looking for here i was just gonna peruse the uh we're gonna go we're gonna go shopping we're gonna go shopping we're gonna go shopping for uh why can't i find this where what am i what am i looking at do they not have transmitters like is it am i crazy or do they not have transmitters transmitter and i should look at the comments because that is what i should do 
Ray Nolan says, mini grappling hook for tree quads. Oh, yeah, I used to have one of those, actually. It was like the super sweet... Um, clandestine mini grappling hook and it like was like in this little like super cool aerospace aluminum like bottle and then you like unscrewed it and then you like screwed in the little prongs that came out of the bottle and then it was like the super sweet little grappling hook and then maybe like that on a fishing rod would work but um i don't know oh red dog drone says uh says they got hot i heard adam insta 360 so i think you're saying the insta 360s would get hot i don't see how that how would that how would that be how could that be because like if anything they'd be cooler if they're flying around that's what i'm thinking uh robert says buy a drone strong enough to fly a gopro style camera i have the Yi, the YI, 4K, 80 grams, and SJ Cam uh, M20, 50 grams. Flying with a GoPro is too risky. That's what it's all about, man. You got to have some risk involved, you know? Again, oh my gosh. It's been up there a while. I did not notice that. Trabs, <laughs> Trabs meter. Come on, Adam. Come on. Anyway, yeah, it is risky. It is risky. But, I mean, you know, GoPros are pretty darn durable. But, you know, it, again, you, you got to, um, why did that come up? Come on, man. Come on. Transmitter. Just, I, I don't want any particular one. I just, I'm, I'm just perusing here. I'm just shopping. Well, look, I mean, even a QX7S, which that looks like it's race day quads. Race day quads. What are you, what are you doing? Why don't you have a transmitter section? Am I insane right now? Am I, did I, have I just lost my mind? Because I cannot find anywhere on these tabs that they have a thing for transmitters, you know, for the radios. Am I crazy? Somebody tell me I'm not crazy. Okay, whatever. Anyway, so here's the thing. Uh, oh, let me, let me get back to this. Anyway, yes. Uh, okay. Um, where was I? Oh, yeah. Red Dog Drone says he uses the Session 4, but it's getting hard to find. The Session 4, That's yeah, that sounds pretty darn old, I think. Yeah, it's funny though how how often they come out with new cameras. So it, it gets me thinking like, oh my gosh, the Hero Six or Seven that's so old, but like that's only like a few years ago. Although the Hero Nine looks, man, ah, uh, once once they go on sale like for Christmas or whatever, I'm gonna get my hands on a Hero Nine because that stabilization, I think, would be perfect for cine whooping. I mean, come on, like that's it's basically real steady in there from just based on what I've seen, what I've seen from other people. It's, it looks just like real steady. Oh, look, a Halloween costume for your, uh, for your transmitter. It's dressed. Oh, never mind. Okay. I thought it was like one of those, you know, uh, Grim Reaper robes for your transmitter, but it's not, it's a, it's a thing for when you're in space. So you can, you can, you can have your transmitter there in your space suit. Anyway, where was I? I got distracted. Yeah, I did. A kickstand. That seems, uh, okay. Anyway, so, all right. So what I was saying was, you know, I don't, I'm not, I'm not super sold on Free Sky. In fact, I think I want to stay away from Free Sky. Uh, which I know limits my options when it comes to radios. You got the Free Sky, uh, Fly Sky, Fly Sky, Nirvana. Uh, a lot of people like that, but I'm not a th I'm not a thumber. I'm a pincher now. Uh, so I don't know, honestly. And it's just weird. It's just weird. Like I get it. They wanted to do something out of the box, but they just they burned the box a little bit there. Um, so I'm not super crazy about that. One thing I have been actually, well, I need it. I haven't done any research actually as of right now, but the, what is it? The TBS Tango? I think it's the Tango. Did they come out with a newer one? 
but the tango looks interesting. Okay, so you got the jumper, T18, jumper T12, jumper, jumper, jumper. Heard people talking about jumpers, um, but I've also heard people say that Radio Master is better than, uh, you know, jumper. Um, my goodness, look at those spikes. Holy smokes. Whew. That's crazy. Man, you may as well just like, like lock your thumb into those things. Good grief. Wow. Probably not a bad idea though. Anyway, all right. Uh, let me actually look up the, see if I can find the, the TBS, TBS Tango. Oh, they don't have it. Do they have it? Might not have it. TBS Tango. Or no, is the Tango the one with the... Um, is that the one with the... Uh, the TBS Tango... Is that the one with the screen? There was that one with the screen. Okay, that's not this one. The Tango 2. Okay. Tango 2 Pro. Well, I'm a pro, so I should get that one, I guess. That's the, oh, that was the original Tango. Okay. The original Tango had that screen, which is like, eh, because then it, that's like a thing that's just going to become outdated as the screen technology gets better. Also, weird. Not a fan. But this one, now that kind of looks interesting. And I think I have seen people who are not thumbers use this, and it seems to work well for them. I do really like the, the, the fold down. I like that things fold down. I think that's cool. Obviously, it's uh, it's going to be using. Actually, what is it using? Is it does it just have Crossfire built in? TBS Crossfire built in. Right, right, right. Okay. So that's cool. Um, obviously if I went with that, I would go with Crossfire since it's like built in, which is, you know, it, there's something to be said for that. Much more compact, much more compact than the, uh, what was it I was looking at? The jumper, no, the Radio Master, Radio Master, not to be confused with Radio Link because everything sounds just like everything else. It's pretty funny how that is. So yeah, that one is pretty darn large. You got a really, really big screen there. Like really big. I'll have to I'll have to look through these features and stuff. That's kind of cool. You have those m module bays and whatnot. Yeah, I will look. I'll have to look through that. Reese Wrangler, hello, and welcome, welcome. We have oh, we got a few minutes left here. <clears throat> okay, I missed some stuff going on here. Let me see here. Uh, Dave, Dave Skybiker, <laughs> FPV, um, says risky for the bisky. So true. So true. Luca, Luca, what am I looking at here? Luca says the TX sixteen S is a is very is a very very good radio. Maybe a Free Sky Light something radio is something for you. Um, yeah, again, except I don't I don't really I I'm not really I don't want to go with the with the Free Sky crowd. I don't think. Uh, not 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 the Free Sky crowd, but I mean you know what I'm saying Free Sky. Oh, Red Dog Drone says same radio Nick Burns uses and it's great. Oh, the um. And that would make sense that he would use that, right? Because he has a ton of... You're talking about the... Uh, yeah, the guy who does like all the micro quad stuff uh, because he, uses, he does have so many different types of of quads that he reviews. That makes sense. Yeah, and that does... I mean, it, it seems like a no-brainer, right? Like it seems like, well, why wouldn't you want to be able to use like any of these receivers that would that could make a lot of sense and maybe someday if uh if you know when we can meet up in a big field again and fly things around if if you're like oh man i need another i need another receiver but they only have these receivers you know free sky receivers and you're like well i can use a free sky receiver because i have this radio that does multi-protocol <clears throat> wow Yeah. <sighs> 
Yes. Very good points, everyone. Robert says, uh, there's something new and better every day you get. Robert, you're so funny. You, whenever I read, and I don't know if you're trying to do this, and I'm not making fun of you, but it's, it's, I, it's funny because all your comments, they read like haikus or poems or something like that. Like there's something new and better every day you get left behind. Just fly and fix what you got till it dies. I think I think you're a poet. I think that's what it is. I think you're like a one of those poet, one of those like uh, one of those beatnik poets or something like that. Anyway, um, yes, good point. Uh, however, the thing is, because and that's generally what I that's generally my theory, which is like like it's you know it's good enough. It flies. You can have fun. You know, it doesn't have to be expensive. And that's that's a big thing that I I do tell people a lot. But because now I want to do more flying that is like more expensive quads and i want to get i want to be able, basically i want to take out uh as many risk factors as possible and one of those risk factors is the gear you know the the radio connection the video connection the actual the physical um the physical quality of the gear because like with my i6x i was having some problems just now i'm not sure what it is i need to take it apart and figure it out but i was having some problems where the yaw would <clears throat> excuse me the yaw would show up as like i was putting in yaw but i was not putting in yaw and it went away and when i calibrated the sticks and then it came back so that kind of thing it's like for for just you know for hobby stuff which is totally great it's like it works it works fine i'm all for it but if it's something where you're like okay i really like need this to to work uh then i you know that's when you kind of need to upgrade to something and that's kind of that's kind of what i'm what i'm looking into um so that's why i say that <clears throat> so yeah so for the record not that i work for fly sky or something but for the record i still think fly sky is like the best budget radio the the best cheapest way to get started uh when it comes to like getting a radio for sure and I do think that possibly the, the i6s may have nicer gimbals, but they could also just be newer gimbals. It's hard to say. Hard to say. Hard to say. Uh, let's see. Daniel says, uh, I have the TX16S. Um, it's amazing, but I still prefer my FSI, I, F, FSIA6X or i I think you mean the FSI 6X. Uh, in some situations, as it's just so much lighter. Well, see, there you go. The the uh, the the weight and size factor there. Awesome to be able to just swap with a bind. Um, or are you talking about? Wait. Yes, I think that's what you mean. Um. Mm. He says set up with the FS F the that the Fly Sky first, then with OpenTX it's easy to just clone the necessary options to make it compatible without changing receiver bindings in Betaflight. Oh, interesting. See, that's another thing that I need to get into, and I'm very excited about getting into is OpenTX. Actually, I'm not that excited, but I'm like excited to excited to learn about it, I guess. But I don't I don't know that I'm I'm not like oh boy open TX but it's more like yay I'll know what that is and how it works. Uh yeah about the Dave 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 not Dave's not Dave Ski Biker Dave Sky Biker I think says uh let's see jumper T12 Pro about the same size as the i6X but with built-in multi protocol. So that is you know so that's jumper so yeah, I do like the small size. Personally, I like the small size. And that was another thing about this trip up to the mountains was like, I, it was pretty silly really, but I was, you know, hiking like up this super steep trail and uh, m my bag started out, you know, it was like, well, this is kind of heavy, but you know, it's got all this gear and I don't know how long I'm going to be out there to, for flying and stuff. So I brought a bunch of junk I didn't need. And it was heavy, man. It was so heavy. It was just, oh, ugh, it's terrible. 
And so having, you know, you might not think very much about like, oh, having a lightweight radio, but yeah, if you do need to hike with it or you carry it around or whatever, and the bulkiness as well, that becomes a factor for sure. If you like, if you're, or, tra you know, any kind of traveling, um, that's a factor. Cause I mean, you look at the, you look at this guy, all those switches, you got that handlebar, you got the antenna switches just sticking out all that all out of that thing like a porcupine then you got the tbs tango 2 look at that that's like the freaking spaceship over there just flying through space and then you got that thing and it's like you know porcupine in a swamp <laughs> no i don't know i don't know what that's like but uh it is more traditional style but of course, you know, with that, you don't have those other options. So give and take, give and take. That's just how it goes. That is how it goes. Okay, let me catch up on this. <clears throat> so Mark Beswick, hello and welcome, says, I've seen a lot of people having problems with the latest versions of the Tango 2. Ooh, what kind of problems? Interesting. Daniel says, yes, it is the FSI I6X. Too many letters in these things. You are correct. There are way too many letters in these things. Like, it is ridiculous. Like, the Radio Master TX16S with the open TX and the blah, blah, blah. And it's like, come on. Come on. Can't we just call it, like, the, the Radio Master, you know, 1, Model 1, Model 2? Come on. I tell you what, man. <clears throat> oh, it says people have been fail-safing a lot with the uh, Tango 2. Now, that is a sad, sad thing because you buy the Tango 2 because, specifically because you're like, I'm never going to fail-safe if I buy the Tango 2. Never. Never. Dave's Biker FPV says, I get 5km with an i6X. Um... Let's see, five kilometers. How far is that in miles? Isn't that like two, almost two miles? No, I'm not sure how far. Wait. Yeah, that's pretty far, though. It's, it is pretty far. Well, now, you know, here's the interesting thing, though. I wonder about, I wonder about um, when you talk about distance, because, like, I've flown out decently not okay decently far by my standards at the time so i, th I think it was like i want to say like two-thirds of a mile i don't know i made a video about it but um and i can't remember i think it was with the fli 14 plus etc cetera, etc cetera. but uh the one of the things though i wonder is like you do have obviously like cases where you can fly five kilometers with the i6x um and that's great, but can you fly like behind buildings? And can you fly like, and, and of course, you know, it depends on the receiver and that sort of stuff as well. But like, as far as the sort of the penetration through objects, that's what I, that's what I wonder about there. And uh, doesn't Crossfire, my understanding is Crossfire, doesn't that, isn't that 900, uh, 900 megahertz? Isn't that their standard? thing uh instead of 2.4 gigahertz interesting hmm 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 yeah no no you know see here's the thing because the tx16s the great thing about the tx16s and here's here's what's really interesting right now is now that you have all these modules coming out or, or or that have been out you know the crossfire modules the the ghost module the um fly sky has a module although it, it might just be for fly sky radios but with all this all these extra external receiver modules coming out it what's interesting is that like the actual transmitter the actual physical the gimbals the switches that stuff doesn't or no, it's not that it doesn't matter. It it doesn't. It's not like it equates to the same thing as the signal, the signal. So, so now it's like you could say, okay, you got a radio master. Okay, cool. Well, 
you know, how far can you fly the, the T-16S? Well, what kind of module do you have in there? Do you have a crossfire module? Or are you binding it to like a little, uh, you know, uh, DSM-2 tiny whoop or something? And so that that makes a huge difference as far as the actual range. So now it's almost like if it can accept a module, then it's almost like you're you're really just shopping when you shop for a radio, you're mostly shopping for the actual physical characteristics or well or the the you know firmware and that sort of thing, but not necessarily the uh, not necessarily the actual protocol or the performance, if you will, if you will. <coughs> mm, excuse me. Mm hmm. Mm. Okay. All right. Enough shopping. Enough shopping with Adam. Shopping with Adam is over. Although I do think this does look like a good one. Um, and uh, if you so desire, you can absolutely leave comments in this video when it becomes not live. Uh, and let me know. Love to hear about it. And... Uh catch up on this thing right here oh wait i know let's do something fun stay there don't go anywhere i'm gonna get something and then i'm gonna come back oh. okay all right i'm making a bunch of noises because i'm super sore because i uh i was helping lay sod yesterday uh you know sod dirt with stuff growing on it and uh i was doing a great job just just like a machine just one one thing a sod after the next bam just killing it um and then today i could like barely move and uh <laughs> And so that's what I realized. I think I lifted like six, no, like, I don't know, like 3,000 pounds or something of sod over like an hour and a half. So uh, anyway, that's, that's why I'm making so many noises. Let me bring up some, uh, if I can here. All right, let me get it going. Here we go. All right, who's still there? You still with me? Is anybody with me? Or is anybody tuning in? I think I think so. I don't know. I don't know. I don't trust those stats anymore that YouTube gives me. But anyway, okay, here we go. Fun time. We're going to do something fun. We are, or I mean, if you think looking at flight footage is fun, which I do, uh, here we go. Let's take a look at this guy right here. So this is, uh, this is my first flight just cruising around with my new and improved budget basher and we've got the phoenix 2 camera on here we're in cam phoenix 2 let's get to right about there and uh oh come on now ah why would that happen this is very silly oh, i'm trying to make it look bigger but i can't all right there we go I don't know if it's just the, uh, I don't know if it's just the fat shark, you know, the scout goggles that I use if the, with the way that it records it or the fi file type or something, but it has issues friends. Let me try this again. All right. So let's get this the right size, something like this, uh, I'm trying to get it set up here now what's cool about this camera here we go here we go what's cool about this camera is um well i i still need to play around with it because i think i think right now i have it set to four by three mode but my goggles are 16 by nine so i'm not sure like why it's doing that or i'm not sure what difference that makes like I can see more of the screen, but I'm not sure if it's necessarily, or see more of the image, but I'm not sure if it's like stretched per se. Oh, there we go. Now we're full screen. Ha ha, look at that. Here we are flying around. 
Well, actually, it's some of it's getting cut off. The bottom is getting cut off. Doggone it. Let me let me fix that. Anyway, this is uh, this is me flying around the other day, just doing a test flight of the uh, well, sort of a second test flight of the new and improved budget basher. And what's cool is that this was actually pretty dark at at the time because it was like it was about to storm, getting towards evening, and it was really quite dark. But in the camera, the dynamic range uh, really uh, makes it better. Well, it's a little cut off, but we'll just have to we'll just have to roll with that, I think. But you can see most of what's going on there. You can see the RSSI. Um, and so far the antenna, the new antenna, every, uh, well, the new VTX antenna and the new positioning on the other, the receiver antenna, it seems to work great. So let's just take a look at this and enjoy it. There's no sound. Much better image quality. It's getting a little dicey right there. But uh, <clears throat> much better image quality. And the way the light was, you can see the sky was like really gray. Great light for this type of flying. Very even. There's not a lot of contrast. Because I would rarely fly um, sort of like up above the trees too, you know, very high like that. Usually that would be kind of too high. But uh, I was just feeling so confident with this new camera and to some extent the video transmitter. It's a little 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 sketchy right there. Um and just also with the lighting, it's just really like I could really see things much better. So I was flying through here testing that out because you see now I've got the the video transmitter should be in a better position to really like receive signals it's funny those props make it look like there's fog over the treetops but there's there's no fog man I tell you what once you get up to like right at treetop level it's a whole new world a whole new world that's exactly what it's like so this was without the GoPro, but once I build my confidence in this new setup, I'll put that GoPro on there and get some of that delicious GoPro footage. Robert Brander asks, what's the best FlySky receiver? That is the FLI 14 Plus, if you're talking about quads, and if you're talking about um, like airplanes, I think the uh if unless it's a really small airplane i think the ia6b is really good um i mean that's pretty much just a standard go-to so i would say yeah those are probably the best ones uh dave skybiker says he sent me a link with i6x mods in one of my videos a while back uh I'm not sure if I saw that. I may have. Ozzy has two questions. Okay, it's actually, his question is already in the Reddit forum. Uh, yes, Ozzy, send me a link. But don't send it, don't do it on the chat, because you can't put links in the chat. So send either comment a link or... um. Or just email me, rcwithadam at gmail.com. There we go. There we go, ladies and gents. That is what the new 
an improved budget basher flies like a little bit. I wasn't going too crazy. I wanted to fly it this morning, but it's uh, it's raining, so couldn't really do that. Um, somebody, somebody said, somebody, somebody said, Mark, Mark says Radio Master just released new versions, new versions of the Radio Master T16S, I guess. So radio, let's just do a quick search radio master T16 T at wait what is it, is it TX 16s T T6 T TX there are too many letters TX 16 s I think is what it is let's see what we get here radio master so is it like what is it like the v2 or something Painless three. I don't see any painless three sixty video. Is that a new version? Or TX? Well, let's go to Radio Master RC because they should have. Unless they have a terrible website. Oh, is it the SE? There's the carbon, carbon, silver, or gold. Is it the SE version? Is that the new version? which I assume stands for super extra. Uh, Dave Skybiker, I, you know, I think I remember that, um, but I have not done it. I have not done any mods uh, like that for the range and, and battery mods and stuff. But, um, so I'm, I, I can't guarantee that I would do that and make videos about it. Uh, but you can certainly leave a comment uh, to those, and I will approve the comment. Or if you want to put a link or something like that in in either the comments of this video or one of my Fly Sky videos or something like that. All right, what's going on here with the Radio Master? Man, these websites, they're like so sketchy. Even like, even like I guess, legit brands. They're just, what? Like, okay, um, okay. It's kind of weird that like the manufacturer of a product doesn't even have like the best information on their own product. Like what? Come on guys, come on, come on. Yeah, I don't know, is it the SE? Let's look up the SE. Or maybe that's not as good. Why do I feel like the SE is not as good? There it is, Radio Master. Oh, that's something out. Well, they happen to have that name, I guess. Uh, why do I feel like this is just one of those websites that like, they're like, oh, of course this is this is one of those things that whatever it is you're looking for we have it here of course okay i'll have to look that up myself as i said a while ago before shopping time is over um <clears throat> um pedro we got pedro on the on the chat says tango 2 can take a multi-protocol module uh that's a good point but then then you have to get a multi-protocol module for that which i don't know i've uh, eh, meh, meh. Meh. um Oh, Dave, Dave Skybiker says uh, I use the X6B for the 5KM flights. Now, here's the thing about the X6B, which I can't remember. I think I saw you might be able to do a mod. I have not done one, but you don't have any RSSI on the uh, on the X6. So there's that. Cody SA, what's up? Um, which I really like the RSSI because now flying without RSSI, it feels like it's like, well, you you might fall out of the sky. You might not. There's no warning. I don't like it. I don't like it. Reese, uh, Reese Wengler says, "What happened to airplanes? 
Uh, what is my most recent RC airplane? Man, I know, I know. I ask myself that. What happened to airplanes? <sighs> you know, airplanes are just, the thing is, is that it's a lot easier to fly quads. That's what it is. It's it's a lot, like it takes, I mean, it, well, in some ways it's more of a pain, I guess, but uh it, it well i've just been getting into quads i've just been getting into quads i've been getting into filming with quads and and doing that type of stuff um and also kind of because quads are sort of like the hot topic i will say but uh but no i've been enjoying quads but yeah i i know i do need to get back into airplanes for reals and I think it's just like that it's harder to just build an airplane and then fly it in the backyard because the backyard might not be big enough and it's just a lot, you know, a lot easier to fly quads in the backyard. So I think that's what it is, but I do want to get back into uh, airplanes and that sort of thing. <clears throat> Ollie C. Uh, want some help with beta flight? Yes. I don't know if I could help you right now because it might be a big problem that you have, but, but we could see, but if anybody does need some help with beta flight or something, I will do my best to help you. Uh, if you email me at, uh, rcwithadam at gmail.com, that is my email. And anybody who has emailed me with questions, my apologies, cause I have been kind of not good about answering those this week. Um, but I, I'm going to look through those today. And so you should be getting a response from me today. And that response might just be, I have no idea, but hopefully it'll be something more useful to you. Uh, Dave says he has RSSI on the X6B. Did you have to, did you have to do something with that? Did you have to, um, he said, I think I have a different FlySky firmware on the radio. Oh, well, but no, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be on the radio though. I mean like RSSI. I mean that is one thing, but I mean like RSSI on the OSD. That's what I'm talking about on the on the OSD. Uh oh, and that is a good point. I think with the newer version, you do like I upgraded my i6X firmware recently. And again, I'll do a video at some point about the firmware for the Fly Sky stuff. But I, I upgraded the, the firmware and I did notice that it like I, I got uh low yeah, I, I would get low RSSI or low signal alerts actually. Um, and it does actually work because I was out flying uh, and and it was getting, I was flying with somebody else and it started beeping. I was like, what's that? And they're like, and I was like, oh, it's low signal. And, uh, and I was like, oh, it's probably nothing. Uh, but then, you know, it turns out it was something because the quad fell out of the sky when this went after it started beeping. Anyway, um, so that's kind of that's kind of interesting. Okay, you say yes, RSSI in the OSD. Well, I don't know what to tell you about that. Uh, yeah, maybe that's a new. I mean, I don't. Is that a new thing? I don't know. Let's check on that really fast. Fly sky, fly sky. The it's the X six B. Well, you know, you never know if the information is really like up to date or not, but just to check here, I want to see, do, does this say that it has RSSI? Cause I, I was thinking it did not, it did not have RSSI. There's a bunch of experiments and videos and stuff that I want to do with these fly sky receivers. I just gotta, well, I gotta do them and then I gotta actually make the videos. Okay, it says supported. So what was I thinking? What was I thinking? Okay, weird. That's strange. Maybe I was thinking of something else. Maybe I was thinking of... I don't know what I was thinking of. Maybe they changed it. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff. I've never updated the firmware on this thing, though. I'm not even sure how. Very interesting. Wow. Wow. Great story. Great story, Adam. Okay. Again, if you're interested in supporting RC with Adam and you like this sort of thing, you can go to ko-fi.com to support RC with Adam. Any amount is appreciated. 
And you could be like one of these people right here. Ooh. And then I'll say, thank you very much for your generous donation. Uh, and I do mean that. Thank you, everyone. Anyway, a uh, little plug for that. That is over. What was I going to do? Oh, yeah. All right. We're going to wrap it up after some beta flight tips, some really cool things about beta flight. Two things about beta flight. One thing about beta flight. Wait. What am I, uh, beta flight? Well, let me just, I'll just do a quick search here so you can, I mean, you can look this stuff up yourself as well. Beta flight on your phone. If you have an Android, you can just download beta flight on your phone as, as an app. Um, beta flight, beta flight, beta flight, uh, beta flight, uh, beta flight, the mobile, mobile. Oh my goodness. Mobile. There we go. Uh, beta flight mobile. So you can take a look at some of these videos. I think, uh, there's a, there's like a newer one. I think it's four. Ah, I can't remember which version it is, but anyway, uh, it's a thing. Just wanted to bring that to your attention so you can get beta flight on your phone, which is super great, super great because then you can just, I mean, shoot, I can show you right now here. Look, let me get this. Let me get this cable. <laughs> okay so all right check this out <clears throat> uh reese asks have i ever tried rc uh collective pitch helis um no i have not done that and i really the only rc helicopter that i've flown is this like this little like micro thing like that big um that was uh that was that was uh provided to me uh, by a friend and supporter of the channel. So thank you. And oh, wrong one. And, uh, and it's a lot of fun. It's just like, a, it's got the little, what is it called? Like the fly bar or whatever, the stabilizer, um, just a little toy thing, but it is, it is a lot of fun. And there's something about having that gigantic rotor that just really brings a, a presence. So I love to, I love to do like little, like precision landing things like on the desk and stuff. It's great. All right. So here's a, here's what's cool. Uh, you get your phone, you you go into the the beta flight app you can get the beta flight app on your phone and then now what you need is you need to have a otg or on the go connector i don't know what the magic is about the otg other than maybe it's supposed to actually supply power that's my guess is that it actually supplies power to uh, to the device from the phone. So you get something like this. In this case, it's a USB-C. You plug that in there. What I have here, you could just go to, to micro USB, which is going to be for your flight controller. Um, but what I have is it just goes to regular USB. So that way I can use this thing with like other USB devices. Um, and then I have a USB to micro USB adapter. You take that guy, you just plug it into your quad. This is a little awkward, but you just, you just, where did, ah, so many pointy things. All right, you just plug it into your quad like this or like that. Let me, I'm gonna get it here. Boom. Okay, and this is safe because we're not powering the motors, just the flight controller. And so you can see our flight controller is actually lighting up with that and so if we go in here and we we click oh i guess we are, we're already connected whoops you gotta you gotta go in here and then it says like notice it's out of t out of date but this is actually the most recent uh this one anyway you come in here and then you click connect you click you click connect and then it's like boom i'm connected and then it's it's just oh it's so great it's so great so that's one of the huge things that i realized is like if i'm gonna go uh i mean if i just don't want to bring my laptop or if i'm gonna go hiking with a quad or something if you have this for android only right now as far as i know i guess you could also do the speedy v thing i think that might work with if you have an iphone or something but anyway it makes a huge difference because then i can i can go in here and change important settings i can change the rates all kinds of stuff so that's a super cool thing i guess i'd known about that for a while but uh i just never really 
never really used it but then when i realized like oh yeah like if you can't if you don't have access to a laptop because maybe you're just going on a trip or or just whatever and you don't want to bring a laptop uh that's a really really huge uh huge deal Jimundo deal the next thing is uh let's um let's go back in here let me no wait let me go let me do that and then i'm gonna bring a beta flight beta flight here we go here we go now we got beta flight up here i'm gonna plug in my quad copter i'm gonna plug it in via the usb to the to the computer here because i want to show you something um let's see mm, well <clears throat> excuse me in any case for now let me just show you uh if we if we can connect it here hopefully this works yay it works so if we get in here and um what we're talking about is a a having your rates on a switch and because i realized like oh well that's really common for airplanes because you might have like high rates and low rates for your airplane and you just have it on a switch pretty simple but i don't think it's as common with uh quads and what i realized was um and i like i still all right we're back hello hello <laughs> yeah <clears throat> yeah my camera ran out of battery that doesn't happen too often uh that, that usually i think it usually has about a two hour battery so that usually means like uh it's time to stop um let me fix this Let's do this, go into there, go into there. Wait, what? Oh, shoot, hang on. Oh no, that's weird. Um, stand by. And we're back. We're back. Okay. All right. Yeah, we're back here. All right. And whoa. Okay. It's good enough. Good enough for now. Okay. All right. All righty. So, um, did that actually work? Yeah, that worked right. We got some weird lines, but that's okay. All right. Uh, so, Frags, I remember you. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for coming back. Okay. All right. So, we got distracted there by the camera. How dare you, camera? Okay. So, we're talking about uh, setting up a switch. Well, just just the fact of that you might want to set up a set up your rates on a switch in Betaflight. And, uh, and I realized that I wanted to do that. And so it's actually incredibly easy. So what you do is, well, first of all, <clears throat> if we go into the PID tuning tab, you can see in the rate profile settings, your, your rate profile, and then you have your rate profiles right here. And you have one, two, three, well, all the way up to six. But right now I only have three. 
and and that's important for a reason. So it says up to three. If you click on that little that little question mark there, it says up to three different rate profiles, as opposed to PID profiles. Rate profiles can be uh, <clears throat> can be stored on the flight controller. The rate profiles include settings for RC rate, rate RC expo, throttle, TPA, blah blah blah. All that basically all that stuff you see down below. Um, and by setting up a three position switch for rate profile, or you, you can you can set it up. You can you can switch between rate profiles. So basically, you can switch between up to three, up to three different rate profiles um, in uh, in Betaflight. And so uh, what you do is you go. You got to make sure you have enable expert mode clicked, and then you go to um, adjustments. Okay, and then here uh, i just have this one enabled so it's enabled you say you, you choose here you choose your switch so whichever aux channel is is which, whichever switch is connected to the aux channel uh, that's what you want to use so in this case aux 4 which is uh, on my radio that well it's like the far right switch so it's like the fourth switch uh, or switch d uh, because it's fly sky so it's switch d uh, and that is just a, um, okay, so you check the switch and then you select, um, you click here, you want to do rate profile selection. So that's the parameter that you want to change. And then I guess make this also aux4. Um, I think it, it might need to be different if, it, if you were doing some other thing, but in this case it works just by putting it as aux4. Not exactly the most simple layout i would say but um and then the range as far as i can tell the range does not matter because since this is and this part is important since it's just a two position switch you it, it automatically switches basically between the first uh rate profile and the and the third rate profile because essentially since it's not a three position switch you don't have that middle middle option which would be rate profile two so that's that's all you have to do. You just set that up for for whatever aux channel you, you, that switch corresponds with, and then you click save. And then so over in the PID tuning, you can jump if you if you only have a two position switch like I do, you'll jump between rate profile one and rate profile three. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going my what I'm planning on doing is having the uh, is basically having one profile for uh, like very slow, smooth flying, think like Cinewoop type flying, uh, super low rates, you know, just really strictly for staying in level flight. And then I'm going to have another uh, profile for like freestyle rates. So that way I don't have to try and get one rate profile that works for everything. Um, so that way I can just flip a switch and then I'm ready to go into the other one. And what I'm going to do is, uh, even though it's a little counterintuitive, but I'm making rate profile three, the one that is, uh, the, the one that is the lower rate, um, because that, because, uh, profile three corresponds to the switch being in the down position. So when the switch is in the down position, to me, that says low rates because the switch is down and when you flip the switch up to me that says high rates because it you know it's like you're turning up the rates you're flipping up the switch so in that case it goes up to rate profile one so i would want to have higher rates for that so like here very very low rates i need to i need to change these but basically lower rates and then rate profile one i have higher rates actually still really just weird rates right now because i need to i need to change those but i realized like hey maybe that makes a lot more sense instead of trying to have one rate profile that's just the perfect one and obviously you want you want to you want to practice with both of these and you want both of these rate profiles to to feel natural so that you are um so that you are it doesn't feel really weird when you switch between them. So probably, you know, you wouldn't want something super drastic, but but with freestyle, you're going to want, you know, want it to be faster and that sort of thing. Here's a really important point. Um, 
I realized that I did have to change the throttle curve when I upgraded the motors on the budget basher. So I had changed the throttle curve here. So now I changed it. The throttle mid is, is 0.2 and the uh, or 20% and the throttle expo is 0.6 or 60%. Um, and that seems to fly pretty well for now. Actually, I flew it without a GoPro, so I might need to change that even more. But in any case, and that's another reason it's really easy to graphically see stuff when you have the app on your phone and and you're able to do that out in the field so that's great um but anyway here's what's really important though i realized when i was switching between those two rate profiles you got to make sure that you keep your throttle curve the same um i i would say keep it the same because probably you want the same kind of throttle most likely uh but if not just keep in mind that um that if your throttle curve does not match across these rate profiles then you will have an immediate jump, uh, either jump up or jump down in the throttle. So notice how, see how the rate curve here. So before, so I was flying around with, with the throttle, like right about there, like just like doing really smooth, you know, hovering, like I like to do flying through tree branches. So I'd have a lot more, a lot of space within that hover range for fine movement, but then, or sorry. And it looked, and it looked like that. But then if you look at like this part right here, when I switched to rate one, it jumped up. So you can tell it's like a little boost. It's like a little throttle boost when you switch profiles. So that is something that I thought was really interesting. And it's actually super easy. Again, you just go to adjustments, you enable that, set that to set that cha channel and that channel to whatever switch you want to use. And then, um, and then I guess, I don't know actually if you set, if you have to set the bar, cause you can't add a range, I don't think. I think you just do the whole bar or something. I think you just do the whole bar. And then um, to basically make all of these ranges valid, I think. And then somehow it just knows that if it's within, if it's like within this range, it's, that's rate profile one. And then it's in there, it's rope, pro, pro, blah, 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 can't speak two and then if it's over there it's profile three but since i have just a two position switch it's either one or three so boom there you go hopefully that was uh hopefully that was helpful i thought it was pretty cool so i'm going to be going in there and adjusting my rates and and changing things up and uh oh let's keep it well i'm not going to save it but keep it set on that one so that way i should have both of them covered i think at least that's the uh that's the idea mm-hmm Oh, yeah. Okay. So Frag says uh, you could always reverse the switch so one is low and three is high. Well, yes. Right, right, right. So, yeah, so that's the that's kind of the weird thing. Like, like if you look at it in terms of beta flight, in beta flight terms, yes, it would make sense. Like, okay, one is a smaller number, so those are lower rates. But when you're actually out there flying – it doesn't really matter what beta flight, you know, what the beta, what the actual beta flight rate profile is, even though I actually have it show up on my OSD. So it doesn't really matter. Um, oh, wait. Oh, I guess that, that could be confusing, but to, to, for me, all that matters is like, I have it in the switch, but that's a, that's a good, that's a good point because, because then that way it would match up with the switch then, because then the three would be high and the, that's a good point. Um, but I would say most importantly, you just want to make sure that how you have the switch is, is, is what you want. But since I do have it in the OSD, it's something to think about. That's a good point there, Frags. That is a good point. But the other thing is you have to remember that that switch is reversed because here's the thing. I really, I'm, I'm really liking more and more not having profiles set up 
on the transmitter <clears throat> um because like for me i'm switching transmitters a lot like i was using the i6x and then i had the problems with the gimbals so now i moved over to the i6s and i didn't really have to like reverse anything or change anything like that so that is another thing to uh to keep in mind i would say um and and it is also that's another really big reason to when you adjust settings like say you wanted to increase your expo or you wanted to increase your rates or something it's for a, for a quad anyway it's really better to do it on the quad like on the flight controller in beta flight than it is on your transmitter because if you lose all that information on your transmitter ugh, that'd be a nightmare or if you need to switch transmitters or something like that all right i think that is everything did i talk about everything that i wanted to talk about i think so and then some and most importantly uh you know we're just we're just we're getting back into into doing live streaming and stuff like that so i think that's it uh hopefully you guys had a good time and i had a good time and um, if you have questions, if you have questions about uh, RC stuff or whatever stuff like that, send me an email, rcwithadam at gmail.com or leave a comment in this video or my other videos because then other people can help as well as they have been helping in the chat. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. And uh, I will try, I, I always try to get back to you in like a timely manner. Sometimes it takes me a while because like I'll have to like look up the thing that you're asking about and, and that sort of stuff. But um, for the most part, I would say I rarely, uh, I rarely forget about, you know, people that email me or something like that. So, all righty, folks, I think, I think that is going to do it for today. Thanks for hanging out with me, everybody. Um, I think we'll do a live stream next weekend. I will plan on it and and all that good stuff in the meantime uh stay tuned for more videos if you haven't seen some videos that i already put out go watch those i got some good flight footage in there i appreciate you and i will see you again very soon